Hi guys, welcome back to Data Every Day. Today we're looking at a data set of uh, different types of glasses, and we're going to try to classify the type of glass given a bunch of features like the uh, elemental composition and the refraction index of a glass. So in the notebook I have uh, given data about the composition of various glasses. Let's try to classify the type of a given glass. And today we're going to use a low-code open source library called PyCaret to train and compare 15 different models on our data. So I've installed PyCaret here and imported um, pandas, numpy, matplotlib, and seaborn for data visualization. And then I have these just these four different functions from pycaret.classification. And with just these functions, we're going to be able to completely, um, it, you'll see, it's crazy. There's um, it does so much with such, just one function. So um, I wouldn't recommend low code for most uh, like projects, but it's a good way of getting a sense of uh, which models perform best on a given problem. So I would use this first to try to like get an overall idea of what would work, and then I would uh, narrow down and choose a model and try to refine it after that. But for today, we're just going to look at PyCaret and what it's capable of. So I'm going to load in the data using a pandas read CSV function. And we can get the file path over here, glass.csv, paste it in, and then we'll look at the data. And you can see it's a very um, nice, it's very small, but it has no, um, it, it's all fully numeric, very clean data set, very uh, nice and tidy. In fact, we can get some more info on it, data.info. And we can see that there are no null values either. So we have all numeric data and no null values. All right, so let's do a little visualization on it. First, I'm just going to make a correlation, uh, a heat map of the correlations. So I'll call core data.correlation.core. And I'm going to set up a new um, pyplot figure with the uh, fig size. I think 16 by 14 should be good. And we're going to do seaborn.heatmap uh, of core. Turn on annotations and set the uh, min and max. Uh, well, the min will be negative 1 and the max will be 1. And I'll give it a nice uh, color map as well. Mako. Alright, and we'll give this a title which will just be correlations. Alright, so let's take a look. And uh, we can see um, type is what we're trying to predict, right? That's the type of the glass. And uh, we can see that there are some high correlations here. For example, the refraction index and the calcium content are, is quite high, a strong positive correlation. And the magnesium content and the type is quite uh, low, a strong negative correlation. We have some other strong, strongish ones here. Um, 0.6 here is pretty good. Uh, in, in general though, uh, it's pretty well, uh, it's not too correlated in any like one section. Like we don't have a bunch of features that are all correlated with each other. So it's pretty spread out in that, in that sense. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's also take a look at the distribution of the classes. So we're going to do a pie chart here. Uh, so make a, how about 12 by 12 on this new figure. And we'll do plt.py. Uh, and we're going to pl uh, put the value counts. So if I do data.value counts, that's going to give us, oh wait, uh, sorry, data subtype.value counts. That's going to give us each unique type and the number of, uh, of that type in the data that there are. So you can see that 2 and 1 are most frequent. And then we actually have only nine examples that have a label of six. Uh, so what I'm going to do is use this and create a pie chart out of it. So data subtype dot value counts. And then uh, for the labels in, on the pie chart, I'm just going to use the index of this. So dot index. And then we can include some colors. Um, I'm going to use the um, Seaborn color pal palette, the same one I have up here, sns.color palette. 
Mako. And we'll give it a title as well. Uh, class distribution. And we'll show it. All right. So we can see, uh, like we saw earlier, it's just a nicer way of visualizing it. We don't need this anymore. Uh, two and one have most of the data. And then we have uh, decreasing numbers of these classes, with six being the least. All right. Um, so that'll do it for visualization. And now I want to get into this pie carrot business. So I'm going to call this model comparison and evaluation. Because uh, pie carrot is, it's crazy. Okay, basically the way it works, we have this setup function. This comes with uh, pycarrot.classification. I've imported setup, models, compare models, and predict model. And uh, basically, uh, once you run the setup function, you're able to call compare models. Um, and basically, so well, let me show you how setup works. We're going to specify data, and that's just going to be our data. We're going to specify a target. That's going to be the name of the column we're trying to predict, type. And then uh, we have a bunch of pre-processing. This is basically like a pipeline all fit into one function. So we can specify a bunch of pre-processing uh, pre uh, functions and transformations that we want to apply. So I'm going to apply normalize. So normally I would use sklearn's uh, like standard scalar or normalizer. Um, but in this case, I'm going to just type this, normalize equals true, and it will do it for me. I'm also going to do a train test split just within this. So a train size of 70%. This will automatically train on 70% of the data and hold out 30% that I can use later with the uh, predicts model function. So this will automatically be applied to the test set. All right, all I have to do is run that. Uh, you can see by the data set, there's nothing else that really needs to be done to the data. Although in a more messy set, we could try using some other features from the setup function. And you can see following data types have been inferred automatically. If they are correct, press enter to continue or type quit otherwise. And you can see they are all numeric and this is our label. So good to go. We'll press enter and setup successfully completed. Fantastic. All right, now uh, let's take a look at the models that um, PyCarrot has to offer. So you can see that with the models function. And you can see we have, uh, I think 18 or so different models here. Um, and I don't believe all of them are for classification. I think this also includes regression models um, because when we do compare models, I think we only use 15 of them, although I'm not entirely sure. Uh, so this is a lot of, a good number of models. You can see it even has gradient, gradient boosting. Uh, we're going to use one function to train, well, almost all of these, turbo. It's interesting. I think these are the three that don't get used. So I wonder if it only trains on turbo models by default. Um, right, so, okay. Uh, we're going to run this model and run this function, compare models, that we don't need to pass in anything except, um, yeah, nothing actually, because uh, setup already loads it in. Um, so, Compare models will just run it on whatever we've passed into setup. And it will output the best model. So we're going to run that. And you can see it's just, it's trained logistic regression, k nearest neighbors. It's just going through each model and training them and then ranking them in order of accuracy. And at the end, it will highlight which uh, model, which have the best metrics in each category. And we have some additional metrics here, the kappa metric. Uh, and the Matthews coefficient, uh, co sorry, Matthews correlation coefficient. So it, it gives you a nice um, spread of different metrics here, and it's almost done. Uh, it's running a cat boost classifier right now, and actually, this is only classification models. I realized because I actually imported it from pycarrot.classification. There's also a pycarrot.regression, which you can use for all sort of regression problems. And it's almost done. Uh, when it's all right, it's finished. And you can see that uh, extreme gradient boosting seems to have the best results. Uh, it has highlighted that these. Ha it has the best um, 
best accuracy, best recall, best precision, best F1 score, best Kappa, best MCC as well. So that extreme gradient boosting has been saved in best model. If I, if I look at what the best model is, you can see it's an XGB classifier. So fantastic. Um, uh, so what we can do now is call the predict model function on best model. And this is uh, going to automatically use the test set uh, that was included in the 30% uh, the not, you know what I mean. <laughs> the other, uh, when we pass into setup, it set aside the 70% for training and the 30% for testing. And now when we call predict model, it will just use that 30%. All right, and we, we train it. We can see it has accuracy of 83%. And so I, for the video now, we're going to be done. But uh, in normally, what you do now is say, OK, maybe I should, like we look, we see that uh, cat boost and extreme gradient boosting, and even ra a random forest and extra trees is doing pretty well. So why don't I test out a few of these and try to refine them and uh, you know, like not use naive bays in this example, for example. Uh, we could use. Uh, we could basically take a an XGB boost, an XG boost uh, classifier, and then um, just refine it and refine it and refine it. All right, so uh, this was a quick video. I just wanted to show you how powerful PyCaret is if you are looking for an overall uh, perspective on what kind of classifiers will be useful. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell for more content, and leave any comments you have in the section below. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day.